Call the member for Bowman. Look, Deputy Speaker, it's obviously important for every uh, government to consult, um, just as it is for every one of us in uh, this chamber. To remember, we're not here forever. But when it comes to Indigenous wellbeing, we need to be doing more than that, more than consulting alone, and more certainly than sitting here in our public lives and seeing nothing changing. That's why yesterday's release of the uh, stronger futures in the Northern Territory caused so much alarm, if not insult, in Central Australia. Because this offer by Minister Macklin to yet again consult on the Northern Territory intervention is more of the same. Now, of course, Minister Macklin can now uh, be very proud that she has an entire page of links to reports under her tenure looking at examining the Central Australian situation. Is there need for more reports and more consultation in the absence of action? Deputy Speaker, I put to you that it is one thing to talk about spending money, but quite another to talk about changing a lot of those who are living in Central Australia. You may well be proud of every single one of these links that take you to reports written by committed uh, committed authors, mostly now forgotten. But in reality, what is changing out there? Well, go back two years, one month and one day, and an almost identically titled report was released promising again in not stronger futures but future directions to, yes, consult on the Northern Territory intervention. Two years, one month and one day ago, we seem to see, see the word future in many of these government documents because there's nothing to talk about in the present. And of course the past is something for which one only apologises on behalf of others. So as we look to the future with documents like this, what I can see is more promises to consult. Now, Deputy Speaker, how long do we have to consult about children not going to school? How long do we have to consult about people not taking up a completely reasonable job just down the road on a mine site? How long should we have to live with the watered down mutual obligation laws under former Minister O'Connor from 2008 when he put in the hardship clause, which said if you have less than $5,000 of liquidity, one can't be breached? Well, who on earth who is facing breaching or mutual obligation has a, has a quick $5,000 in their bank account? None. It was a blanket exemption on mutual obligation. Deputy Speaker, all Indigenous Australians are asking for is some decision, some strength. It's one thing to be using the rhetoric of stepping up and getting tough when you're talking to people in the South, but quite another when you whisper around the communities and you tiptoe around communities whispering that it's such an unfair intervention. In reality, the only thing that's changed, Deputy Speaker, between these two reports are the adjectives. I mean, even the photo shot of the minister is exactly the same. The only thing that's changed are the adjectives that back in 2009 um, she was talking about hurt and betrayal, and then in 2011 the minister is talking about anger, fear and distrust. But in the end, apart from the adjective changing, the content is exactly the same. The great problem is how can adjectives even change when nothing is happening except on almost anthropological fixation with the Labor side of this chamber to watch the intervention and consult on it. Look, Yes, we, we brought it in as a coalition government towards the end of 2007. And correct, we had just three months to consult. And let's accept it could have been implemented far better. I accept that intervention, Deputy Speaker. I accept the intervention. It could have been consulted even better. But certainly an Australian government receiving bipartisan support in that November of 2007 could have started a process of consultation. But no, like you're looking through an oven window at a rising souffle of frustration, you just sit there and measure the intervention and talk about it. But nothing's been improved. Despite everything that was promised in 2008 and 2009 in those internal reports written by well-meaning people, there is a fundamental failure here. Minister Macklin is quite happy to fund Noel Pearson to, rise, uh, to, to increase uh, school attendance to 85 per cent. She funds him to increase school attendance, but doesn't have the wit to take the ideas of Pearson and disseminate them anywhere else in the country. So in the rest of Central Australia, we have school attendance rates that have stalled at 60 per cent and has barely changed 1 per cent in the following three years. The ideas are there, they can be easily disseminated, but they haven't been taken up. Look, Deputy Speaker, I appeal to you. There has never been a lot of jobs in Central Australia. There's certainly been difficulty matching jobs uh, to people. But with the mining explosion and the thousands of jobs appearing, there is no excuse for having remote Indigenous communities right next door to mine sites hyper-endemically unemployed. There is a time where we have to match up these good young people to job opportunities just down the road. The Kimberley has more jobs than it has working age Aboriginal adults, but this government hasn't had the wit to put the two together. The simple reason 
that they find it impossible with their left-wing ideology to make someone do something if they don't feel like doing it at the time. That means you don't have to send your kids to school, you don't have to take up a job if you don't feel like it, you don't have to drink in moderation if you don't feel like it, and that is the fundamental problem with Labor's approach, that they've been unable to apply mutual obligation to the challenge of Central Order. Australia. Order. 